Hello, this is old Mr. Kent of MrKent.com and in a previous video, just previous to this one, I uh, flew over to do some exploring because uh, early in the morning before the sun comes up, straight ahead out here, I keep seeing, uh, it looks like people with flashlights looking for something and they're down behind some bushes because as they move it, uh, you know, the light goes dimmer and brighter as, they, as they're walking and so forth. So I thought, what are they doing over here? And so my first flight, I really didn't uh, do a thorough examination. So on this flight, I'm going to look a little more thorough, and I'd appreciate your help if you happen to see anything. Uh, actually, what I'm looking for is footprints where the only place they would be. And uh, so uh, I've decided they're only on this side of the canal because there's a levee on the other side. So uh, I can't see behind that. Anyway, so we'll drop down here pretty soon, <clears throat> and we'll take a look. But uh, I thought in the meantime, I would share a story with you about flying. And in order to share that story, I have to uh, t teach a little bit of flying, uh, uh, the principle of how planes stay uh, balanced on their, on their uh, wing. So a diagram here shows that uh, the, the plane, the, the, as it flies along to, to fly horizontally, it has to be balanced on the wing. And so uh, that, that's, uh, that's the way they're designed. And if it's not balanced on the wing, uh, like if it's nose heavy, well, then it'll nose down to the ground. And if it's tail heavy, then it'll, uh, it'll uh, nose up and eventually slow down and stall and crash. So uh, you either have to hold it in place or to make, uh, to make life easier, they put a trim tab on it. So say, for instance, if you put two people in the back of this plane, uh, that's going to cause the tail to move down and the nose to move up on the balance. And so then you would climb and uh, that would slow down and, and you would go into a stall and crash. So in order to take care of that, they put trim tabs on, a, on the horizontal stabilizer. That's the uh, thing on the back by the tail that stabilizes it horizontally. And so a trim tab is uh, just a little extra little uh, tab that sticks out on the end of the, of the horizontal stabilizer. And uh, <clears throat> if, uh, if the nose is, uh, is heavy, well then uh, the, uh, the trim tab is set to bring the nose up. In order to bring the nose up, uh, you have to uh, make the move the horizontal stabilizer up, and to take the nose. To, if it's if you got people in the back, the noses want to go up. So to keep the nose from going up, well then the horizontal stabilizer has to be aimed down a little bit to hit the wind. And in order to get it to go down naturally, you put a trim tab that is uh, is trimmed to go so the air hits it. And uh, then that moves the, the stabilizer down and keeps the, hor the, uh, the plane flying hor horizontally. All right, now what I did here as I flew uh, over those power lines, I had to go over 200 feet, and I came down to about 100 feet. And I, I'm looking for footprints, uh, anything that, uh, that would show that there's people uh, over there. And uh, people walking around over there in the morning, <clears throat> and so uh, keep an eye open. I don't. I, when I looked at, it, I didn't see any footprints. And by the way, uh, those holes that we see, uh, they're not gopher holes. They're larger than gopher holes. So uh, I don't know what what uh, animals would be down there, but maybe that's what they're looking for. I don't know. But that you'd think you'd see some footprints uh, of people walking around the way I the way I watch the flashlights and those lights moving, it just looks like they're they're moving around. So um, anyway, so keep an eye, and uh, if you see any footprints, I didn't see any, and so it turns out I you know it still is a mystery. But uh, so anyway, as we go along here, <clears throat> I'll finish my story. So in other words, if you're if you're flying along in a plane, uh, you trim it so that you don't have to hold the yoke, you know, uh, you don't have to push on it or pull on it to keep the plane flying horizontally. They put a trim tab, and that adjusts the horizontal stabilizer for you. And, of course, you have to adjust the trim tab. You have a little uh, control up front that you can uh, uh, change it. So you, you adjust the trim tab. That makes it go nice and horizontal. 
and then you can enjoy your flight. <clears throat> so let's say that uh, we put two people in the back. I think I said that. Well, then the noses want to go up, so then you trim it. So with the two people in the back and you in the front, uh, <clears throat> you don't have to hold the yoke uh, in to, to push the nose down. Well, anyway, so here's my story. This is my story. Years ago, uh, my wife and I both, uh, well, I still have my ham license, uh, amateur license, but she, she doesn't. But anyway, and we both had two-meter handheld radios. Now, a two-meter handheld radio is good line of sight. And uh, so, you know, we could talk to each other, uh, you know, like on camping trips and stuff like that. Notice those holes down there? Uh, I don't see any footprints around them or anything. So anyway, uh, we would use those. Well, also, you, you, the, uh, up in Oregon and Washington, they have a, a network of repeaters so that you can, uh, you can actually, if you're miles away, you can connect with a repeater, the local repeater, and it'll connect through all the other repeaters. And uh, two or 300 miles away, you can still talk to the other person uh, at the other end. So... Uh, on this particular day, I had to fly from Spokane, Washington, down to um, La Grande, Oregon, and that's quite a ways to fly. And I don't remember the details of everything, but my wife wanted me to let her know when I got there. And I think it was because it was a possibility of bad weather, and and then um, so I just I grabbed my handheld and I uh, I threw it in the back of the plane, what they call the hat rack. It's behind the rear seat, and it's uh, it's you know it's easy to get to, but it's uh, it's back behind the rear seat. And I was flying along, and uh, see all these holes. Uh, it's like there's there's something you know that's that's all I see is the holes, and of course some tractor tractor uh, tracks from where they the farmers have been doing stuff. So anyway, I got in the plane, I took off from Spokane, I'm headed to Lagrand, and it was quite a quite a long flight. And, uh, and there's some little critters on the ground. I don't know what those are. Remember, this is from 100 feet up, so uh, I don't know what they might be, but they're, you know, they're, not, they're not tiny. Well, so I got, as I went along, the weather got a little worse and a little worse and a little worse, <clears throat> and she expected me to get there and then call her. And if I didn't get there and call her, well, then she was going to get a little panicky. So as I went along, I got to where there's some, I had to go over some mountains, and uh, it got worse and worse and worse. So I decided, and I was almost there. So I decided, okay, I'm just going to turn around and go back. But it's still an hour and a half or so uh, flight to get back, and uh, she's going to be wondering where I am. So I'm flying by myself, and I need to crawl back into the back of the plane in order to get my, my handheld radio. And uh, so I could, because uh, up in the air you can you can do line of sight for many miles if you're if you're up in the air. I'm, so you can, I could call her from the plane. So anyway, I thought, now how am I going to do this? Because as soon as I crawl back to the pl to the back rear of the plane, the nose is going to go up, and if the nose goes up, the plane is going to slow down, go into a stall, crash. So I didn't want I didn't want that to happen, but I had to get to my handheld radio. So I thought, and I thought, and I thought, so, okay, if, I, if, if the nose is going to go up, I need to trim the trim tab uh, so that when I start crawling back into the back, instead of, uh, when I let go of the yoke, the plane will automatically want to nose down instead of nose up. So I, uh, <laughs> I was guessing all the time, how much do I need to trim it? So I... Uh, I trimmed it so it was nose down and then of course I had to slide my seat back behind the passenger the front passenger seat so I could crawl between them and so I slid my seat back now I'm leaning way forward trying to get the trim tab set right and there's just enough space so I can crawl through and get back to the back of the plane and grab my grab my handheld radio now keep in mind I was thinking now if I trip or if I fall and I get my no, or if I get my leg tangled up in the legs of the of the uh, seats, uh, I'm in real trouble because I can't get back to the yoke fast enough. And the yoke is what you use to uh, pull back and push and keep it 
keep it horizontal. So I, uh, I, I guessed at what it should be trimmed at and uh, I had my seat pushed all the way back and very quickly <clears throat> I lifted my right leg over and uh, put it, put it on the in the into the back seat floor, and I lifted my left leg over, and now I'm now I'm totally in the back seat, and I'm looking backwards, and I don't know what the plane's doing because I'm looking backwards, and as you can see that that was all I could find. By the way, um, you may have noticed uh, as we were on the on the ground, about ready to come back up. That on the on the other side of the uh, of the canal, there's a, a levee. So everything has to be taking place behind some bushes, uh, and I think that's the only place I could figure out. So those lights are coming from somewhere <laughs> in the area that we flew over, and uh, there I'm sure they're just people looking for something. And it's just before sunrise, so it's when it's still dark, and they're using flashlights. Well, anyway, so now I'm facing backwards, and I'm uh, reaching back, and I'm thinking, man, I, I can't drop my handheld when I grab it. I just got to get back there real quick and grab it, and then drop it, turn around, drop it into the front seat, and very quickly get back to the, uh, crawl over the seats again, and get back to the front seat and scoop my seat forward, and uh, hopefully it'll all work. So that's what I did. I, I uh, turned over, turned around. Got I got my legs over. Uh, turned around, reached back, grabbed the grabbed the uh, handheld radio. Oh, and I had to have some wires to plug it into the antenna with, and all that kind of stuff. So it was a big kind of a mess. Anyway, got it all in my hand. Uh, <clears throat> quickly turned around, dropped it into the passenger seat, and uh, uh, <laughs> jumped back into the front seat and uh, started connecting the radio up. Uh, to the to the aircraft's antenna because that's the only way I could get all that distance out of it and called my wife and she answered and I said I'm just going to come home we'll have to do this another day so that was uh, that was the time that I crawled into the back seat and got what I needed and crawled back into the front seat and uh, hopefully you learn a little bit about trimming an airplane in the in the meantime so anyway I appreciate your patience with my stories I want to uh, wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year while I'm at it. And I want to thank you for watching my video and God bless.